This is the Sony a6400 and it's been around for a while. And if you have one, one of the questions you may be asking yourself is, how do I get perfect exposure all the time? Now, there's many different ways to get good exposure or perfect exposure with your camera. There's many tools, there's many different methods and techniques. Uh, one of those is what we call the exposure triangle. Now, I'm sure you've heard of that before, but we can go over that really quickly just so that if you haven't heard it before, then you understand what it is. Exposure triangle is made up of three things, which is why we call it a triangle. That is your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Now, all of these have something to do with how your exposure is handled. And some of these actually have dual purposes, but we're not gonna get into that today. We're just gonna look at the effects that they have when it comes to exposure. So starting with the aperture, the aperture is just the opening in your lens that lets in or cuts out light. The wider the aperture is, the more light can come in. The more narrow the aperture, the less light can come in. So when you see these numbers on your camera like f1.4, that means you have a wide aperture, which means you're gonna let in a lot of light. Now, if you see like f16 or anything like that, that means it's gonna be a really small pinhole and it's not gonna let in that much light. So again, the wider the aperture, the more light, the smaller the aperture, the less light. Now moving on to shutter speed, when you're talking about a camera, your shutter is the thing that stops or allows light to hit the sensor. A shutter opens and closes, and the longer it's open, the more light can come in, and the shorter time that it's open, the less amount of light that comes in. Now there is a difference between electronic shutters and mechanical shutters, but we're not going to get into that. We will just say that when it comes to video on this camera, we're talking about an electronic shutter in video mode. So now that we understand what a shutter is and how it works and we understand what aperture is, the last one here is our ISO. Now the ISO is a little bit different from the first two because it doesn't actually affect the amount of light physically that's coming into the camera. Rather what the ISO is, is it takes the light that's already hitting the sensor and it amplifies it. So that is the difference between the other two. Now ISO is something that we all use and you wanna use it sparingly and you wanna use it within your camera's capabilities. Again, we're not gonna to get too deep into the technicality of this thing, but what we are gonna do is just talk about how to nail exposure every time. So now that we have an understanding of the exposure triangle, moving back to aperture when you're talking about exposure, choosing the right aperture is very important. Now, a lot of people will choose aperture solely for the look that they want. So let's say you want a shallow depth of field. Remember, a wide aperture is when your lens is all the way open and a narrow aperture is when the lens is stopped down. But a lot of people like that bokeh look or that cinematic look that a lot of people call it. What that is, is depth of field. Now, the wider your aperture is, the more separation there's going to be between the thing that's in your foreground and your background. So if you're pointing at something and something close to the camera is in focus and what's behind it is out of focus, that is your aperture at work. Now, the other thing that the aperture does, again, is it controls the amount of light that comes in. So what we need to do when it comes to aperture is we need to understand what it is that we're shooting. If you're gonna be shooting outdoors and you want that look where the foreground is in focus and the background is out of focus, well, if it's a sunny day and your lens is open wide up, because remember, we have to have that wide aperture in order to get that separation between the foreground and background, we're gonna have way too much light coming in. So we need to cut down on the amount of light that's coming into the camera. Now, if you change your aperture, then you may lose that separation. So that leaves us with two other options within the camera to cut down on light, that being our shutter speed, and our ISO. So let's say our ISO is already as low as it can go, and we wanna keep our shutter speed at one over 50, and we still have too much light. Well, this is where an ND filter comes in. So a neutral density filter screws onto the front of your camera and allows you to cut down on the amount of light that's coming in. This is a way that we can control the light that's coming into your camera. So you can still get that depth of field and you're not overexposing your image. Now, before we get into what exposure is, let's take a look at the second one, which is our shutter speed. Just like the aperture, when it comes to your shutter speed, this can control the amount of light that's actually hitting your sensor. Remember, a faster shutter speed 
is going to let in less light, whereas a slower shutter speed is going to let in more light. Now, again, these things affect two different things. Your shutter speed is not only going to affect the amount of light that's coming into your camera, but it's also going to affect motion blur. If I wave my hand like this, you're going to see a little bit of blur on my hand. That's because I'm shooting at 24 frames per second at one over 50th as a shutter speed because I want that more natural cinematic look. Now, if I were to speed up the shutter speed, I'm not only going to lose light, but I'm going to get a different experience with my motion here. And I'm not going to do it here just because I've done it before in other videos, but you get the point. So again, with aperture and with shutter speed, you're adjusting more than just the light when you adjust your aperture and when you adjust your shutter speed. Now, our last one again is our ISO. Now, one of the things with the ISO that you have to remember is the higher you push it, the more noise you're going to get. Noise is just interference within the signal. Now, you're always going to have noise within the camera, but the lower your light source is, the more that noise is going to be prominent. And it's going to come up to the top and you're going to see it. So now that we have those things out of the way, how do you nail perfect exposure? Well, there are some tools built into this A6400 here that we can go over and see how to get the best out of this. Now, one of the first tools that I highly recommend using on the A6400 is something called the histogram. Now, the histogram is just a little box that comes up on the right lower hand corner of your screen. You may have seen it before and wonder what it is, but this can be a good tool to give you a roundabout overall picture of what's going on with your exposure. Now, if you look at this box here, you can see all the way to the right is going to represent our highlights and the middle is going to be our midtones and the very left here is going to be our shadows. Now, the thing with the histogram is that when you're looking at this, it isn't going to tell you precisely what object is where on the histogram. So if you're looking at your histogram and you're filming something and you're seeing that most of the graph is all the way to the right, you're overexposing it. Now, if most of it is all the way to the left, then you're underexposing it. Now, if it's not touching the sides and it's in the middle, then more than likely you have a pretty good exposure. Now, keep in mind when it comes to exposure, this is something that is to your taste. You may want things to be overexposed. You may want things to be underexposed. If you're shooting an S log, you may overexpose just a little bit. So keep in mind, this is just a guideline to tell you where you are so that if you look at it at a glance, you know that you're not way over or way under your exposure. Now, if you notice at the bottom of your screen, there is a number that changes as you move your camera around. And this is your exposure value. Now, this is a combination of your aperture and your shutter speed together, working with the metering system. And I'm not gonna get into all of that, but basically when you look at this here, what you wanna try to do is aim for zero most of the time, if you just want perfect exposure. Now, if you're starting to get like plus two or minus two, now you know if you're plus two, you're overexposed. If you're negative two, then you're underexposed. Again, this is sort of like the histogram where it just tells you in a quick way of looking at it, if you're within the parameters of exposure that you wanna be in. Now, again, this is to taste. Sometimes you may wanna be over, sometimes you may wanna be under. So this is just another tool that you can use. I'm just letting you guys know what this is and how to use it. Now, another thing that the A6400 has is something called zebras. Now, what zebras are is they are little lines that look like zebra print that go over the parts of your picture that are overexposed. Now, this can be set in the menu and you could determine what overexposed is. But once you get the setup, which we're not gonna go through now, we're just telling and talking about the tools, is when you have the zebras set up, you can look at it and quickly tell what part specifically of the picture is overexposed. Now this can be really handy if you're shooting outside or in an environment where your light is changing. Typically you're outside and clouds are moving past the sun. You may be shooting cloudy at first and then the sun comes out and then you notice you have zebras. Well, you can adjust your ND filter or you can adjust your ISO. You can adjust your aperture or your shutter speed, whichever one you want to adjust that is going to give you the picture that you're looking for is what you're gonna adjust. But the zebras tell you really quickly what it is that you're looking at. Now, I wanna talk about something that the A6400 doesn't have that I highly recommend you get if you want to really focus on your exposure and you wanna have the maximum amount of control over things. And that is 
an external monitor. Now, I know a lot of people may be saying, what's the best monitor? There is no best monitor. There are a bunch of monitors out there and you have to do the research to figure out which one works best for you. Now, I use the Atomos Ninja V. That's because I needed a monitor that could record, that I could put LUTs on. If you don't know what all of that stuff is, that's totally fine. But the one thing you do wanna know about the monitor is something called false color. Now, what false color is, is a map of different colors that represent different IRE. Now, IRE, I'm not gonna get into what that is, but basically it is a measurement of the amount of light or a certain range that certain things should be in. So for instance, when you're talking about skin tones and things like that, usually you're gonna to wanna to be in the 40s for IRE. You don't wanna go over 100 and you don't wanna go below zero. So that is your range for IRE. But what happens with false color is depending on what you're shooting, you could see the different colors and it represents if something's overexposed or if it's underexposed or if it's properly exposed. Now you wanna understand how to read your false color, which I'm not gonna get into, but I highly recommend you people investing in a monitor. You can get one now for pretty cheap uh, that has false color in it because this makes things really simple and it makes it really quick where you can look at it. You don't have to worry about looking at a histogram. You don't have to look at zebras and you don't have to look at all these other things. Not that those things aren't good because they do have their place, but to be able to look at the histogram and right away know where you wanna be with your exposure makes things a whole lot easier. The other thing with monitor too is it allows you to put LUTs on it. Uh, and what a LUT will allow you to do is to kind of get an idea of what your final picture will be. Now the Sony a6400 does have an assist on it, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. There's a lot that this camera has that I haven't even got into yet. Now, just like everything, there's a lot to learn when it comes to exposure. And this video doesn't cover a lot of that. This is just the basics so that you get an understanding of what's out there. And you could take this information and do your search and figure out what it is that you need to learn about exposure. But that's one of the questions that I've seen a lot in forums and I've gotten in my comments from time to time. So I just wanted to address that. If these videos are helpful to you, be sure to let me know. Until next time, I'll holla at y'all later. I'm out. Peace.